know this expression. Let's My name is Biggie 13 Talls, also known as So Suave. And this is Transcendence Podcast Episode 2. Championship weekend, everybody. Um, how's everyone doing today? I pretty much just got off work. Um, and I couldn't wait to come record this podcast for everybody. It's I've been having a real tough time making time to record the podcast. Sunday was just a no-go completely. Sunday was, there was no way I was going to be able to work on the Sunday. And unfortunately, it looks like my webcam might have been frozen for a second. So I apologize to everybody. But back to it, Sunday was a clusterfuck. There was no way I could have even started the recording Sunday. The matches got over. I wanted to go to bed after the matches. It wasn't, I'm, I'm Arizona time. It wasn't that late. It was only eight o'clock. Maybe nine, but it wasn't that late. All the matches were way too fast for playoffs and finals. That was insane. I can't believe that all that happened. I will talk about that all later. Um, but first, first we have the Mercy. There we have a little bit of a Mercy event. It's not, I don't know if it's an event, but it's a developer update. Um, we get this new Mercy skin. It's a BCRF Mercy charity skin, as it says on the developer developer update overwatch page on the youtube yeah pink mercy i think the skin looks cool i don't know if i'll get it i don't not exactly sure i haven't exactly read on anything on the charity that it's being donated to i could i definitely could um looks real cool though i like this i like the skin the emote there's a couple new emotes but other than that it looks fun um i did read that the 
Charity got an A plus rating on, by Charity Watch. Sounds like Overwatch, but got an A plus rating, a 91. Charity Navigator gave it a 91.16. Um, that's real cool. That's all good and everything. I. Every, you know, some charities don't exactly put the money that you send them in the right place. I guess this charity does. Who would have thought? But moving on, we have, for my second topic, we have Moira, Moira Hacks, I'm just going to call it. It's, uh, so you can charge your beam faster by spamming the damage button. Who would have thought? Um, I don't know if it was intended. It charges significantly faster. I do know that. I haven't been able to play because... This hand here doesn't exactly work. Like, I, I can't control anything. I don't have a WASD key at all. I have these two fingers, these two right here. Yeah, the pointer and the pinky. That's all I have that functions even normally other than my thumb. Um, but yeah, uh, charger beam faster. I don't know if it's a permanent thing. I assume that once Blizzard realizes it's been out for like a week and a half now. Once they realize that it's a, a bug, they'll change it. If it is a bug, if not, then we'll see some pros do some crazy shit in, in Overwatch League, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, it was a Reddit post. The one I saw, I saw two posts. I'm not sure which one was first. But I saw the one on Overwatch University, on the Overwatch University subreddit by How to Basic 101 um, It wasn't... Uh, there was another one. I'm not sure who the original poster was. I'm not really worried too much about who the original poster was. Sorry to who, whichever one of you was the original poster. But, uh, yeah. Do, 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 do. Give me one sec while I adjust these things. Yeah. Um, all right, moving on to topic three. Fuel eats Coco's chocolate balls with Harry Hook. It was just a video, a little fluff video that the Fuel put out of Coco and Harry Hook making chocolate balls. Nothing real special there. I thought it was funny. I thought it was entertaining. I wish they would win a map. A match. Not a map. They win map, maps every once in a while. But I still wish they would win more maps. That would be amazing. I Everybody knows that. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was a cool little fluff piece. It was interesting. It was funny. It was fuel. Harry Hook and Coco. Some of my favorite players, even though Coco barely plays. Uh, moving on. I don't have much to talk about these first couple first couple topics. They're more just fluff and broken things. Uh, but moving on, we have balance changes on the PTR. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think they've gone live yet. We have a new escort map, Rialto. Um, I haven't been able to even play anything at all, obviously. I tried to play the other day with my point, my pointer and my thumb. Doesn't really work at all. I wish it did. Really, I do. Um, but Rialto was the home to Talon agent Antonio Baratolo Bartoloites, a sprawling estate and the backdrop to the infamous Vince, Venice incident. Cool. So it's um just background for retribution, I guess. A turning point for Overwatch and Talon. The Italian government has taken great steps to preserve Venice and the results are striking. Tourists visiting the picturesque town can sample the regional cuisine, enjoy a relaxing gun. I know these words. Gondola ride and visit Galleria de Arte Omnica or simply take in the sights with a stroll along the canal. I've seen, the only thing I've seen about the map really was a professional match. Um, between X6 Gaming and Fusion University, I believe. It was a couple couple days ago. It was a really pretty good map match. Um, the stream I caught was in Korean, though, so I didn't understand a lick of what they were saying. I didn't... Obviously, I didn't know what the words were, but I knew what the words were because it's the same. Um, but yeah, I think Rialto looks really beautiful. I can't wait to, like, see it in Overwatch League. That'll probably be next freaking season if it is in Overwatch League. But yeah, I, I think it's going to be a, a nice thing to add when whenever they add it. I think it'll be great for, for the scene and everything. Um, on to some hero updates. We have Brigitte. Her shield bash cone angle was reduced from 90 to 60, so it's just like, instead of this, it's now this. 
that's easy enough. If you don't understand that, um, take a triangular cup and squish it. Um, when fighting against Brigitte, this is the developer comments, when fighting against Brigitte, it often felt like Shield Bash was able to hit players who felt like they were out of its range and should have dodged it. I had this happen all the time when I was playing with Brigitte. It was definitely very... It was very... I don't want to say unfair because I feel like the, the ability itself is pretty fair. I'm not really that worried about all of that. Um, but... I can see it's like a Reinhardt charge when you would just get hit on the side or you'd hit somebody right in the middle and they wouldn't hit, wouldn't be caught by your charge. But I, I think it's a good change. I don't think anything is necessarily wrong with Brigitte at the moment. Other, I think that's going against a lot of what the community is saying. It's, I like Brigitte. Unpopular opinion. I like it. I like Brigitte. I think it's a fun thing to play with play against that adds more i i hate dive right now like it's so boring it's just been on for too long i want i want a damn tank meta back all righty on the flip side when playing as brigitte sometimes players would hit the wrong enemy in the middle of a fight i had that happen to me a lot of times i'd be trying to hit a reinhardt but i'd hit the freaking zarya that was kind of next to him whatever that's besides the point. With the con being reduced, the ability is more accurate to his visual representation, which is, I think it's going to add even more, like, skill skill to the hero. You're not just going to be able to shield bash anybody now that comes right anywhere in front of you. I think it's a great addition and everything. Um, these are some old updates. I'm sorry, guys. I haven't been able to record. Um, Genji, his deflect hitbox has been reduced. Obviously... It was big. It was big. Like, you could shoot around Genji and he would be able to deflect back at you. I hated that when I played McCree. Absolutely hated it. I tried. I'm shooting someone else and Genji's deflecting me. Whatever. Um, the hitbox on Genji's deflect was big enough that it would sometimes reflect projectiles that were pretty far away from him. We've tightened up the hitbox, which should shit solve this problem of still fully protecting him from projectiles that would hit him from the front. Um, I've had issues where I've been shooting behind him and which I thought it should be ahead hit a headshot but it got deflected whatever that's that's whatever I'm happy they're fixing it I'm real happy they're fixing it it's a a welcome change um I also think they made it a little bit bigger since the initial change because he was getting headshot while he was deflecting which obviously shouldn't happen that obviously just like that's weird that's that's something that's completely unintended all right, and next we have Hanzo. This is the biggest change out of all of them. Um, they completely remove Scatter. Thank the gods. Thank the gods. Um, which introduced Stormbow. Everybody knows kind of what Stormbow, well, I guess his bow is the Stormbow, but the projectile speed was increased from 85 to 100, so it shoots a lot faster. I think it's a good change. I felt Hanzo shot really, his his arrows were really slow before. I think it'll help with connecting shots and just playing him in general. Um, Sonic Arrow, the cooldown was decreased from 20 to 12. The duration was decreased from 10 to 6. And the radius was decreased from 10 to 7. And that's all meters, seconds, and seconds. The cooldown, cool. I like the cooldown at 12. I don't. I think 20 was like really a lot. I know that for half of that time you were still getting the effect, but I I think that it's just going to benefit Hanzo even more now. The duration, kind of a moot change to me. I don't. I I appreciate that sense. Of course, if they didn't change it, he would have two seconds on cooldown where he wasn't able to see anybody. Now it's half and half, just like before. It's half and half. Um, the radius, cool. No, it doesn't really change much. You just gotta, you gotta be more precise with the air, with the arrow when you shoot it. Okay, cool. Um, he has new abilities. Lunge. Press jump while in the air to leap horizontally. I think that's a really cool change. I think it adds even more skill to Hanzo again. Uh, I like I like skilled heroes. I'm a silver player and I'm trash with Hanzo, but I like having skilled heroes in the game. Um, I don't want these heroes all to be easy. That defeats the purpose. If 
if it was easy, then I wouldn't want to play the game. Um, and now we have Storm Arrows, the completely replacement for Scatter. Um, Hanzo can now rapidly fire up to six arrows that deal reduced damage but are always fired at full power. I saw it and the first thing it reminded me of was McCree's right click, I guess. His um, alternate fire, a lot more accurate, of course, than McCree's alternate fire, and it doesn't have the kick kickback that McCree's revolver does, but I think it's a really cool... I think it's a really cool ability. It'll add more play. It's rid of scatter, first off. It's completely rid of scatter. That's the biggest change, the biggest like thing I've heard in a long time, and it's really helping. Um, I think it's really helping. It's going to help with the pro meta, the silver meta, the gold, bronze, silver, every all the metas, all the skill tiers, they're all going to see improvement because of this change. No more goddamn scatter arrows when he's low on health and you're about to kill him. As an Orisa, he kills you in one shot. What the fuck? All right, and the developer comments, the goal of these Hanzo changes is to allow him to have new options and maintain his high damage output while removing the frustration of fighting against the old scatter arrow. Thank God. Hanzo is now much more mobile with his new lunge ability and the combination with the, of the bow projectile speed increase and the new storm arrows ability, he can now deal his high damage more consistently than ever before. I remember right before they got rid of it, they reduced his scatter arrow cooldown from 10 to 8, I think, on accident. But they did, they were like, oh, we don't want to change it, of, of course. All right, next up is Junkrat. Um, his frag launcher, the projectile size of his bombs was increased from 0.3 to 0.2. Cool. Makes his bombs less likely to hit you. He has to aim more. Jump right aim, I know. It's like Winston main. Um, rip tire. The tire speed, movement speed, was decreased from 13 to 12. Once again, I think it's adding more counterplay. Um, it's it's fast. It, the, the rip tire is fast. If you're in bronze, silver, you might not be able to shoot it at 13. You might not be able to shoot it at 12 still. But, hey, I think it's a good change. I think it'll... All of these changes, I think, have been good changes. I think they all add something good back to the game, and they're fixing abilities and just general problems that everybody has been having in this game since it came out, and since they've added all these characters and everything. Um, Lucio, wall ride. Wall riding is less likely to be interrupted along a single surface. Why are you changing Lucio? This is These are the changes that I don't like. Stop changing Lucio. He's really in a good place. He's in a fine place now after the change, but he was in a fine place before the change. There's no reason to change Lucio again. You just changed him. You kind of just reworked him completely. I'm not mad about it. I'm not worried about it. I think it's a, still a good change. I think that... It didn't break him. It didn't break him. It broke him for a minute because... The change messed up some stuff, but I, he's fixed. He's fine. Um, wall riding is less likely to be interrupted. Can now go around corners without having to leave the wall. Cool. Cool. These are all moot, moot changes that don't really make a difference to me. Um, can now land back on the same wall after leaping away, provided his leap takes him far enough away from the original jumping off point. So that's just saying you can jump off a wall and go back to the same wall if you don't want to go to a different wall. And before, you couldn't jump onto the same wall. It, that, that's, that's a good change. I think that one's a good change. Um, his movement speed bonus was decreased from 2.5 to 2 meters per second. Just slowed him down a little bit. He was really fast. And I see, definitely, as a Lucio player, I... I knew that, and I loved it, and but I, it's not going to change much. Um, this change isn't going to change much. Added a minimum time that the jump key must be held before Lucio can ride around corners. Cool. Soundwave no longer consumes ammo. So is Boop no longer consumes ammo. I like that. That's a great change. That is something that I really appreciate, something that I think is just cool, just cool. I, it's a good change. It's a quality of life change to me because I'm tired of being or low on ammo, but this person is running at me. There's a Winston jumping. I'm going to boop him. 
as an ability, I don't think it should have taken... Does it take or took? I don't think it should have consumed ammo in the first place, but I, I see why it did. But I appreciate now that they got rid of it, that it is that it's gone. Um, so, so the developer comments, wall ride has been significantly overhauled to allow it to function more so smoothly across more areas of every map. Um, I also think that this change will be more noticeable on console than on PC. Um, Lucio players should instantly notice a huge improvement in where and how wall ride can be used. In addition, Sonic Amplifier's sound wave ability was unnecessarily controlled by both a cooldown and an ammo cost, so we're removing the ammo cost. They, they, they do agree that it was unnecessary to be on a cooldown and cost ammo. I've never liked it. I've never complained about it, though, because that's just the way shit is. Um... Uh, and now we come to the last change that, other than the Hanzo change, is probably one of the biggest as far as meta changes and meta implications and just general Overwatch. Tracer has had her first change ever for Pearl Spawn. The max damage was decreased from 400 to 300. So in essence, she's not going to be killing as many tanks. I, I think that it will be... I think that it will still be important for her to stick tanks. I still think that the most sure thing to stick is a Winston who is has no jump cooldown or an Orissa who can't move at all because she's an Orissa. Um, but yeah, I, I think that I think that the change is good. It's her first ever change, which is amazing to me. She's been such a staple of Overwatch since the game's release and alpha and beta testing even. She's been just there. She hasn't changed at all. She's, she was the only character who hasn't changed at all. Um, yeah, 400 to 300 on the damage. Developer comments, Pulse Bomb was too good at killing tanks who can be easy to stick due to their size. That's the downside of a tank. You're huge. So it's easy for a tracer who's small and quick and agile to run up to you, stick a Pulse Bomb in your back, and run away. You can't do shit about it. And I don't think that it's definitely it's still not going to change anything to do with Lucio. Lucio, you stick a you stick a squishy character with 200 or less HP, they're still going to die. You stick yeah, you stick any character with less than 300 HP, they're going to die. So Doomfist, he might not die because of his armor if he's going around punching shit and has max armor, but he'll be very low. He'll have 50 health left. Um, but yeah, the damage reduction reduction makes it less powerful as a tank destroyer while keeping it lethal against most other heroes. Once again, just reiterating that it's still going to be lethal against DPS supports and low HP tanks. Um, so that's the last of the hero changes. We also had some bug fixes that I have no reason to go into. Uh, all right. So on to... Overwatch League, week five. Uh, we will be talking about all of the, uh, not all of the games, most of the games I was able to catch on Friday and Saturday. Um, I wasn't able to catch Thursday or Wednesday games, but I'm not too worried about that. So on Wednesday, the first match of the day was the Philadelphia Fusion against the Dallas Fuel. Um, Philly won 3-1. to one. Dallas, once again, came, didn't perform. Um, Toko played, I believe. He didn't play that good. Um, effect is gone, so it was AKM and Seagull. I'm surprised they got one map against Philly. Yeah, it, it's, what, it's what I'm expecting from, from Dallas at this point. 3-1-4-0. I'm not expecting much more unless they're playing the Shanghai Dragons, which please don't lose the goddamn Shanghai Dragons, Dallas, please. Please, I thought it was going to be Philly. Please don't lose. Um, second match of Wednesday, Florida Mayhem versus the Gladiators, LA. 0-3 towards the um, Gladiators. Florida was able to tie a map. Florida's improving. Gladiators are still, still one of the best teams in the league. They were in the stage playoffs. Florida is improving, though, as a team. They are getting better. They're getting more more control over their team comps, over their communication. Everything's everything's looking up in Florida, and obviously things are looking up in L.A. for the Gladiators. Um, third match of the day, 
The Houston Outlaws. I did see this game. The Houston Outlaws versus the San Francisco Shock. Houston loses two to three. If I remember correctly, Houston won the first two maps and got reverse swept. I could be wrong. I will go check. But if I remember correctly, that was that was the deal. Um, I feel bad that Houston lost again. Wait, what the heck? Uh, week five. Oh, that's week four. There we go. Um, yeah. So, it's taking a minute to load. So, yeah. It went back and forth. It was actually a really good game. So, Houston won the first map. Um, Volskaya, 4-3. to three. That was a good, great thing. They played great. Shock just couldn't get it. Um, game two on Numbani, Shock pulled out three to two. Um, game three on Nepal, Houston won that one, two to one. Um, game four on 66, though, Houston has not been able to perform on Route 66 ever. They have an abysmal map record, if I remember correctly, on Route 66. Um, they lost two to three. And then game five on Oasis, they got 2 0 They lost both maps. So unfortunately. Just just unfortunate. I, I feel bad that they lost again because I like Houston. They're one of my favorite teams. They can do better. I'm expecting much better from them. Um, on to the next map. The next day, actually. San Francisco shot 4 0 Florida Mayhem. Cool. Nobody cares. Two of the worst teams in the league. Not really worried. San Francisco played good. Florida didn't. Um, on Thursday, we have the Boston Uprising versus the L.A. Valiant. Boston won 3-2. to two. Um, I know, if I remember correctly, they both played very well. It was almost a reverse sweep. If that tells you anything, all the matches, all the maps were close, except maybe Blizzard World, because they did, because L.A. did get full held on Blizzard World. Um, Blizzard World is a really hard map to attack. I know that because I've seen these teams go and obviously with um, week four's matchup with Philly and Shanghai, Gregory Gregory came and stalled for who knows how long on, on the defense. So Blizzard World is just a hard map to take. Boston 3 0 them. Um, game three on Nepal, LA won 2 to 1. Reverse sweep time. Everybody knows they played good. On Route 66, Valiant came out 3-2. to two. And on, on Oasis, LA Valiant came and played well. But they lost two maps to one. So unfortunate. I think that LA is... They're not as, they're not as high level as Boston, of course. Um, they're definitely that 3, 4, 5 seed that was proven on that was proven on Sunday. Um, up next we have Dallas Fuel versus the New York Excel. <laughs> I don't want to talk about this because New York is New York. Dallas, for whatever reason, took them to five maps before, but this time they got four owed. Um that's unfortunate. That's really unfortunate. I I'm always rooting for Dallas. I always want Dallas to perform well. I think they're a great team. Um, so they came, lost 2-1 on Temple of Anubis. Um, they got one point. They got one map, or one point. That's cool. Lost 2-1 on Blizzard World. Once again, they got one point. Um, got 2-0 on Nepal. NYXL is NYXL still. I'm not, like, freaking out about that. But on Route 66, they were able to get one point, but they also lost. Um, up next is Friday Gladiators versus Boston. That goes three to one towards Boston. Uh, um, there's not much to say about Boston anymore. They're, they're Boston. They're going to come out and they're going to perform to the best of their ability and they don't have off days. They don't, they don't slump. Gladiators performed well. They performed as well as any team can against Boston. Um, so 3-2 on Volskaya towards Boston. So they both capped. Um, I don't remember the time bank that LA had. It was a close game. It was all a close game. 
Um, game two on Numbani, though. Uh, Gladiators got full health on point one. Boston. That's all I have to say. Boston. Uh, game three. Gladiators won. Two to one on Nepal. Um, I think that the Gladiators have a really good, a really good control team. They they come in, they take space, they they do the things that you got to do. Um, game four on Route 66. This one went all the way to to overtime a couple times. Um, so we have Gladiators went all the way to four points, but Uprising outscored them, went to the fifth point. Unfortunate. Um, I don't really have much to say about this one. They they performed well. They didn't pull it out though, unfortunately. Um, doo -doo -doo, where was I? Friday, New York XL. 3-1 versus the Shanghai Dragons. Cool. NYXL, Shanghai Dragons. One versus, one versus 12. We knew we expected it to happen. I'm surprised that New York lost the map. Um, but they did come back and they performed well. So um, on Volskaya, it was 2-1 in favor of NYXL. Obviously, they came and performed. Game two, though, however, on, on Numbani, Shanghai Dragons made it all the way to the third point, or at least they, I don't know if they made it all the way to the end, but New York XL only made it to two. Game three and four. Game three, 2-0 on Nepal for New York. New York also has a very dominant control, control team. They're very dominant on that, on that map, on the map type. Um, game four on Route 66, 3-2 towards New York. They performed. That's all there is to it. All right. So for s Friday, the last match of the day, um, London versus Seoul. Both of these teams came to play. Both of them did. And unfortunately, only one team can win. And that was the London Spitfire winning 3-2. Um, so game one on Volskaya Industries, Seoul Dynasty came out hot. Got all the way three points. So they finished the map. London finished the map. Seoul came back, got one point, couldn't capture second. But London couldn't capture first. So the map goes to Seoul, three to two. Game two, kind of a similar thing as game one, except this time in favor of the London Spitfire. They made it all the way to the end. Seoul couldn't finish it. Game three, however, Seoul once again comes out on fire, takes it 3-2. I don't remember the, the percentages that each team had. I do wish they showed it on the Overwatch League website, what the percentages were for the maps. Um, but maybe, maybe they'll get that in. Maybe later, they still don't have the stats page yet, which is insane. I want stats, Blizzard. Give me stats. I want to see how much damage Coco blocked. It's not much. Game four on Junkertown goes to the London Spitfire, three to two. Not much that I need to explain there. Game five, two zero on Oasis towards London. Not much I need to explain there either. Both of these teams, both of these teams should have been some of the best teams in the league, but they, they aren't. They, both of them have hit some hard times lately. To be quite honest with you, I think that London they should be set second in the league, third maybe behind NYXL and Boston, but they should be in that top three. Seoul should be in that fourth spot. But since stage one playoffs, London hasn't performed to their capabilities at all. They let go of Fisher and Rascal, and Fisher came back and showed them who he was. And Seoul is just not playing themselves. They're putting in... Uh, they're not playing Jaehong. They played Jaehong first off. They played Jaehong on tanks this week. That was very strange. He was playing the monkey while Guido was playing. Guido and Toby, I think, were playing the supports. I think Guido's a fine support, but he's not Rio Jaehong. Um, all right. I talked all about that, I believe. All right. Next up, we have Shanghai Dragons versus the London Spitfire. Shanghai came out, played a decent, 
Temple of Anubis, 2-1, lost to the Spitfire, however. I'm, I'm expecting a lot from Shanghai come Stage 4 and Season 2. Um, they have potential to, to be one of those middle-of-the-pack teams. Uh, honestly, it's just, it depends. It depends on how hard they work and if they make any changes to their roster. Giguri is still the best player on their team. She probably always will be. Unless they get some insane, some insane players on their team. She is the best player right now. Um, Undead is gone, unfortunately. Who was their best player? To some unfortunate circumstances, but also. Um, but other than that, we have game two on Numbani. Shanghai Dragons lose one to two. I'm not expecting too much from these teams. They. To be honest, I'm not expecting much from the Shanghai Dragons, but I'm rooting for them in every game that they're in unless they're facing Dallas. And Houston. Um, so, game three on Nepal. It goes 2-0 towards London. I don't know if Shanghai is the best control team. They could, they should be. They really should be because Gaguri is the best Zarya in the league. By far, I believe. The best Zarya. Um, but map game four on um, Junker Town, they Shanghai Dragons came and delivered. They delivered what every all the fans are asking of them. They beat the London Spitfire on map four, three to two. Go Shanghai. Next up, we have mm, an unfortunate 4-0. <sighs> Everybody lay your hat for the Houston Outlaws and their Tracer problems. Um, so, Soul Dynasty, 4-0 is the Houston Outlaws. That's uh, unfortunate. So, on map one, Temple of Anubis, 2-1 uh, towards Soul. Houston came out not looking like themselves. They, to be quite honest... Since stage one, they haven't really looked like themselves because of the meta changes. I believe now that since Tracer has been kind of nerfed, that things will get easier for them. They'll be able to just play what they need to play to win better now. Um, but game two on Numbani, Seoul comes out, three ones them. They complete the map. Houston only really catches first point. To be quite honest, they only caught first point. Um... Moving on to Ilios, Seoul, 2-0. No reason to talk about Ilios. Junkertown, which... <laughs> Jake Rat, what the fuck? There's not much to say about Junkertown. They they came out, Seoul, all the way to the end, I think. But just just an unfortunate... Unfortunate game. They, they lost. They lost. I wanted them to win. I... I really, I really did. And last match of Saturday night, one that kind of made me hype for Sunday morning. It's not Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon when everything started up. We've got the Los Angeles Valiant going three to two against the Philadelphia Fusion. So Valiant came out, performed on both Sky Industries, kept both points. Philly kept first point, couldn't cap second. I liked it. I think they went into overtime on first point. They had four minutes or whatever, and they couldn't cap it. Unfortunate. Uh, next on um, Numbani, both teams cap all the way to third point. But Philly, I believe that Valiant were in overtime, so all Philly had to do was one tick on first point in overtime. They did that. Um, game three on Nepal, LA comes out 2 0s. Sweeps right through them. Easy, GG. GG, easy. Um, game four on Route 66. Philadelphia Fusion. Two to three. Towards the Fusion. It, all these maps were good maps. They, they, they came out, they played strong. Um, game five, 2 0 towards the Valiant. Awesome. Keep, keep working, Valiant. I appreciate everything that you're doing. All right, moving on to Championship Sunday. 
these matches were insane. They were absolutely insane. They I expected more from both of these teams, from both of these LA teams. They came out hard, but they lost, unfortunately. Um, so first game on Sunday, after some serious trash talk by the Boston Uprising towards the Gladiators, I would play the YouTube video, but I don't have it set up. Essentially, they said, we want the easier team first. We're taking Gladiators. Now that would have that would have pissed me off as a Gladiators player, and I and they did. They came out very strong on Junkertown. Very strong on Junkertown. And they rolled right through first point. Almost rolled right through second point. Finally got through second point. And they almost finished. But they they didn't, unfortunately. Um, so, on Junkertown, they... Gladiators come out really strong with some key pickoffs by the Widow. Um, but unfortunately, they just they slumped real hard on their defense round. They kind of got rolled. That easy. Um, game two on Ilios, and keep in mind that the playoff matches are best of five. So they, if you get 3-0'd, you, you're out. You lose three maps, you're out. But best of five, in that case, uh, Boston came out very strong on, no, on Ilios. Very strong. They... To Odom. They didn't have much of a chance to even cap the point. They, And if they did cap the point, it wasn't for very long. Um, and then on Temple of Anubis, Gladiators got full held. I don't know. It, it kind of felt like they had given up at that point when they realized that they weren't going to be able to cap first. Unfortunately, 1-0. to zero. Moving on. Next match on Championship Sunday. We have... The Los Angeles Valiant versus the New York Excelsior. New York Excel came out very strong. So did the Valiant. Very similar, to be honest. The exact same thing happened in the Valiant NY game versus what happened in the Gladiators Boston game. It, It, mirror matches, literally mirror matches of each other. Valiant came out very strong on Junkertown and wiped through first and second point completely with the Bastion Strat and all. And then third point, they couldn't finish third point. New York XL comes out very strong and finishes all three points. Um, game two on Ilios. Uh, we got a 2-0 to zero in favor of NYXL. Not much really changed it was literally the exact same the exact same as as game one really temple of anubis 1-0 towards new york itself valiant didn't cap first point i i want more of valiant i want more of both of these la teams they have so much more potential and if they work hard they will reach their potential they will be these contenders for stage playoffs and and season playoffs when when time comes to it but I really wanted to see him play on Blizzard World. That would have been just, just amazing. On to the final round. The final round. So we've got in the finals, the New York XL versus the Boston Uprising. Just good games in general. Really good games. These, this game was much better than the first two. Very similar on Route 66 as it was to Junkertown. Both of these teams kind of swept through first pretty quick. Um, NYXL ended up coming out 3-2. to two. I don't think they finished the map, but Boston didn't finish. Um, game 2 on Nepal, 2-0. This is when I thought that it would be another repeat of the, the first two games. I was worried that it would be a repeat, but... Contrary to what I thought, Boston came out on Volskaya Industries and tied. So we had a four-map series, but the score doesn't show that. The score shows a 3-0 in favor of New York, but it was a 3-0-1. There was a tie. There was a, a map tie, and it was, it was Volskaya. They, Volskaya is just a hard, very hard to deal with. 
for, for teams in pro league and on ladder, obviously, because 2CP is just rough. People really don't know how to mobile, mobilize and group up and attack. Um, but game four on to Numbani was a fun match. It was fun. It was fun to watch. I had a great time just watching this ma these maps. Um, but New York XL on Numbani did three to two Boston. They made it all the way to the end pretty much and Boston kind of choked. But that's it. New York XL, stage three champions. Got $100,000. I think it's a hundred thousand. I think the losers get twenty five thousand dollars for for losing. Ha! I wish I got twenty five thousand dollars for losing something. I'd be rich by now. All right. Um. I will say that Simler had a real sick suit. It was like a. It was just nice. I'm not going to describe it, but I will say it was nice. And I had planned on my next topic. Moving on to be a discussion of the boosting controversy, but I don't really have much to discuss. Um, I don't think, contrary to what most Koreans and people think, honestly, most people don't agree with the Koreans either. But I don't think the boosting is a big deal at all. I don't think it. I don't think OG OGE should have been suspended for it. I don't think that um, what's his name from Boston? Dang it! I'm mad now. I'm real mad. I don't remember his name. That's unfortunate. I talked about him last week. Oh, by the way, that ruling from last week was false. Don't remember his name. Hmm. That's unfortunate. I'm really going to try to find it. Nah, he's not on it. But yeah, it uh, should be in this one and my other show notes from last week. And I'll just look that there. So yeah. Um, Sato, that's who it was. I am I was looking on the wrong teams. Yeah, Sato, his suspension was false. It was 30 regular season games, not 30 games in general. So he will be able to play at the end of stage. He can apply for reinstatement now at the end of stage three. Um, other than that, there's not much to talk about Sato. He should be able to play beginning stage four. If he's smart, he will be able to play beginning stage four. If not, he probably didn't apply for reinstatement. All righty. I think that's it. Um, I don't think that boosting is a big deal at all. Um, from what I understand, these guys were just trying to make money to pay the bills. That's not, I'm not going to demonize someone for trying to make money to pay the bills because that's all I'm trying to do right now is make money to pay the bills. I understand that is against Blizzard terms and conditions. You can't do that. It is boosting. It is illegal according to Blizzard, but I'm not going to suspend you for three whole stages because you are boosting. It's just not something I'm, I would I would do. I don't see I don't think it's that big of a deal. Maybe OGE's suspension was was called for in a couple games. Not bad. I'm not worried about that. But it's not as serious as some of the community thinks it is. Um, but I do want to talk about. Actually, I don't want to talk about that. I will save that until next week, um, since we have a weekend off from Overwatch League this week because season stage four starts in a week and a half. It is Wednesday, and I would be watching Overwatch League right now, but it is Wednesday. Um, so that's going to be it from me. So suave, also known as Biggie 13 Talls, also known as Road Race 13 on the Twitches. That's it for Transcendence Podcast. I had a great time with you all. I hope you all had a great time with me. Tell your friends, follow. Um, someday I'll get a subscribe button. I'll be an affiliate someday. Follow so I can be an affiliate. I would love you all. Hope you all have a great rest of your day. I probably will be back on soon to play some Pokemon. Well, hope everyone has a good one. Thanks for, thanks for listening. Have a great one. I'll see you later.
Bye, guys.